All right, Melania, Blade of Mikola, one of the most memorable boss fights in Elden Ring. But even after struggling for her first phase, victory is still miles away as she transforms into the Goddess of Rot. A toxic yet very graceful human butterfly, with the Scarlet Flower kind of serving as the chrysalis for her metamorphosis. Just like the Aeonian butterflies and even her own brother who is locked inside a cocoon. Melania essentially goes from a larval state into a butterfly. Meaning the Scarlet Flower is her... Dammit, what's the correct pronunciation again? Pupa. Uh, let me check once more just to be sure. Pupa. Ah, that's right. Pupa. So, the Scarlet Aeonia is basically a pupa flower. Which makes you wonder, what would it be like to go through the game using only the power of the pupa flower? Or is it the lack of power? Because you might think, and so did I, naively, that such a playthrough would not be any problem at all. After all, this incantation inflicts an extra potent version of Rod. So most fights would just boil down to getting the Rod going, and then you can simply focus on avoiding attacks while the opponent's life drains away. Well, uh, it worked out a little bit differently, because instead it led to some ferociously frustrating floral fuckery. Mainly because of some additional restrictions. I'm on PS5, so I had to do it on New Game Plus to begin with. However, I started the new game cycle at a rather low level, namely at level 50, and my vigor was only at 20. And my intention was to get as far as feasible without leveling up my vigor. And although my only rule was that I personally could only inflict damage using the Scarlet Flower, but my goal at least was to not use additional spells, shields, great runes, summons or anything like that, unless an absolute roadblock would be encountered. After all, with a powerful rot inflicting attack, there's no need to kill the lily and add anything else to it, right? Might as well keep things simple and pure. But you see, the thing is that this is one of the slowest attacks in the game. Meaning you are completely vulnerable while in flower form. And yes, you do have hyper armor, but you can still get knocked out of the animation before the flower blooms. And having hyper armor can actually cause you to get stuck inside a combo, rather than getting knocked away into relative safety. So, using Rot may sound quite overpowered, but every rose has its thorns, and power means nothing if you cannot survive while waiting for your own attack to finish. I mean, it's kind of hard to avoid something when you cannot move at all. On top of that, it's a very expensive spell that costs a lot of FP. In fact, it costs Melania herself an arm and a leg, but for us it means a lot of Cerulean Flask, especially when you encounter a boss who is completely immune to Rot, and for those who aren't, they can still have very high resistances, which actually increase after every successful proc, which is a new mechanic introduced in this game. So, did I come out of this adventure smelling like roses, or did I slowly wither away while walking the Pimrose path? Well, this is what happened when I tried to beat Elden Ring by becoming a flower. So, let's go for it. Wait, what? So, sorry everyone, the, the wife is calling. Yeah, you, want, you want money or something? Oh, an intro song. Well, yeah, I'm not aware of any song called Rotflower. What? Oh, Bloodflower by Draconian. Yeah, but it's more applicable to Varys Bouquet. Ah, fuck it, it sounds close enough. Can't skip out on the intro, of course. Well, we are a few minutes in already, but whatever.
All right then. So given that it's a requirement to do this run on Nuke and Plus, at least on console, I wanted to have a sort of fresh start. So I put everything that I could possibly remove from my inventory into my storage box, leaving only an upgraded seal with an S scaling in faith, so that's good at least. And of course I had my flask and some appropriate fashion. Now starting at a low level would be kind of pointless if I would immediately go and kill the giant dragon for example, or farm in any other sort of way, because then I might as well just have started at a higher level. And for talisman, I would just collect them as I would be going through the areas rather than riding across the world first. I more or less wanted to keep things as basic as possible rather than utilizing all kinds of crutches. But, uh, spoiler alert, the further we get into the run, the less I'm going to care about that and you will understand why that is. So, therefore, I just immediately went towards market to test out how effective the Scarlet Aeonia really is. And to be fair, it started out exactly the way I expected. I just had to get two attacks in and the rot would do the rest. So at this point, I thought that the run was a bad idea for a different reason. Namely that it would be too simplistic and would not give me anything to work with for a video. Well, not only did that not turn out to be the case, but on top of that, I experienced massive technical issues with my recording device throughout this playthrough. So my apologies for the inconsistent quality throughout this video. And for me, it made the whole experience a lot more time consuming and uh, a lot more frustrating than it already was. Oh, but of course, I could not neglect the opportunity to give flowers to the waifu. Snake, do you think love can bloom even on a battlefield? Yeah, I do. I think at any time, any place, people can fall in love with each other. I think so too. Yeah, maybe bringing Vare's bouquet would have been a bit more subtle. Anyway, because I wanted to keep things sort of uh, fresh start-like, I went towards the Earth Tree avatar in the Weeping Peninsula for the shield tier, even though I technically already had it. And the same goes for the faith boosting tier, which provides a decent damage buff, but would soon be outclassed by the regenerating crystal. After all, for the majority of the fights, the actual physical damage from the flower itself would be not nearly as important as the actual rot. So for those fights, defense is more important than offense. So while I was here, I picked up the Crimson Medallion for a small health boost, given that I wasn't planning on leveling up my vigor, unless absolutely forced to. And well, despite that small boost, Here's where I got my first hint that this playthrough would not be as easy as I thought it would be, and that I had unwittingly sown the seeds of misery, and that my victories would largely have to depend on RNG. Meaning that strategy-wise, I would have to aim for not safe opportunities, but for opportunities where it would be less likely that a boss would do a particular follow-up, for example. For example, the most likely way to survive is when a boss does an attack that actually knocks you back so that you will be out of reach of any follow-ups. After all, even with a larger health bar, if you get caught in a combo while sitting still, waiting for your attack to finish, then Vigor isn't going to mean that much anyway. But at least the shield tier could potentially provide a sort of free damage opportunity, sometimes. Or even if I would take multiple hits, that initial damage reduction could be what prevents my health from actually reaching zero. Oh, and by the way, even though you could of course technically just run away from a field boss after inflicting rot, so you don't even have to dodge anything while waiting for the rod to wear off. But, nah, yeah, that's kind of lame, so I chose not to do that. Not that I would be fighting many field bosses in this run anyway, but still. That wasn't flying, that was falling with style. Well, the benefit against Godric is that he has slow attacks with really delayed wind-ups. So that does help you survive while in flower mode. However, instead of attacking only once and then waiting for the rot to wear off, in this fight it's actually smarter to do as much damage as possible right at the start of the fight, because some bosses require active damage to change phases. Margit did not, however Morgoth does, and Godric is another example. In fact, if you would use something like Poison Mist, then you could actually defeat him without triggering his second phase at all. And speaking of that phase change, I initially made the mistake thinking that the rot doesn't carry over. And there is a short period where it doesn't take any damage. So I initially made the mistake to attack again even though the rot was in fact already active. 
But given that you have to attack him anyway to change his phases, you can actually go through the entire second phase without attacking at all. So this fight was quite straightforward. However, you need to also take into account that every time you inflict a status effect, a boss becomes more resistant to it and it requires more build up to inflict it again, which becomes more and more noticeable the further you get into the run. So then I headed into Leonia to pick up the key to the academy and just for the hell of it, I attacked the dragon there. So here you see why I didn't just run away during the tree avatar fight, because even when waiting for a liver to drain away, a fight should still be about dashing and jumping all over the place. Speak of which, I know you would like me to continue towards the red wolf, but bear with me. Since I was in this area anyway, I chose to pick up the two fingers heirloom for an extra faith boost, since I was still quite a ways away from 80 faith. I did consider the servant of rot talisman, but getting bombarded with pass threats with such a small life bar wasn't appealing to me. Moreover, the power of the attack itself is mostly significant when the boss is immune to rot, in which case it wouldn't have any effect anyway. Oh, and on a side note, how long did it take you guys to figure out that there isn't an invisible wall where the seals are? I mean, for the longest time I just assumed that you couldn't get past here. But it's not an invisible wall, they are literally only meant as floating warp points. Yeah. Well, anyway, hopefully the highly agile red wolf wouldn't turn out to be an actual wall in this run. Because a slow attack against a fast moving boss with projectiles doesn't sound like a very pleasant combination. And instinctively, you want to try to attack when you would normally have a safe opportunity for melee attacks. But the poopa flower is so slow that, uh, well, other than just getting really lucky, there is no safe opportunity to use it. And basically, that is something that applied throughout most of the run. The boss just has to happen to do an attack that you can actually survive. So that's why we need to work towards 80 faith, not for the damage boost, but so that we can pray towards Iron Jesus. Fortunately, the Red Wolf has a low amount of HP, so the Rod takes care of most of it. In fact, when it wears off, he has so little remaining that you don't need to survive through the entirety of the flower animation, as long as you survive long enough for the victory matches to appear. Because in a playthrough like this, a simultaneous kill is... Uh, not unlikely, but you know, I don't see that being any sort of a major source of frustration for upcoming boss fights. <laughs> anyway, time for Renala and a little seedlings. Sweetings, don't sweat it. Well, for the first phase, even though you have to take things slowly, you're still getting booked. But ironically, you have to speed up when Renala falls down, because you will need to boom bloom her as quickly as possible, otherwise you won't be able to avoid her explosion when she goes back into her bubble. Now, you might think that the rot is actually helpful here, but in a way it isn't. Because Ronala has no death animation when she is inside of her shield. Meaning that we have to drain the final bit of her life bar while she is on the ground. Now, the upside is that the rot will do enough damage to get to that point in two cycles. Regardless, that still requires four FP bars to even get to the second phase in the first place. And on top of that, I couldn't get myself ready for the second phase by drinking my physic flask and to refill my FP. So I couldn't make use of the free attack opportunity you get at the start of the second phase since you can avoid a soul stream by immediately running towards her. But then there was another issue because when your bloom goes boom, you can actually knock her down and out of the hitbox of the poopa pedals. Meaning you will not be able to inflict her with rot that way. And as if things weren't RNG heavy enough already, Renala regularly jumps backwards all on her own, leaving you completely vulnerable to her projectiles with no payoff to begin with. Fuckalicious, this might actually take a while. <sighs> Damn it, if I could catch one, I could actually read a book while waiting for the rod to wear off. Alright, this time I made sure to have FP for the initial attack. I actually launched myself right into the beam, but surprisingly it didn't knock me out of the animation. And this time she did remain inside of the hitbox of the Poopa paddles, and got poopa in the process. So then I could just focus on avoiding her projectiles. By the way, interesting detail. Not only does she get iframes while inside the full moon, but apparently she is temporarily completely removed from the field and then spawns back in as the rod damage stopped ticking, but also isn't cancelled out. Alright, final hit. That did not take as long as I feared. Blah, what? Oh, come on. Oh, come on. The fuck? Who the hell monologues for that long when you murder them? In movies, isn't it the one doing the killing who monologues? But... Now the victory masses didn't appear, meaning that it didn't count. God fucking fuck. Instead of a flower, you can get my seed on your face. Well, um, let's try it again. 
and I made sure to refill my FP and drink my Physic Flask before the second flower attack. And then of course I knocked her too far back again. Shit, fuckers from outer space. Yeah, this, uh, this entire playthrough is like playing a slot machine basically. Well, at least I narrowly survived the second attack, so the rot will nearly kill her now. Alright, just one final hit. Even if I knock her back... Uh, uh, hey, uh, don't jump back yourself! Oh, go on. Oh, god damn it, so this is taking a really long time. Uh, son of a bitch! Well, at least I wouldn't make that same mistake twice. Okay, the rot is doing its thing again, very nice. Avoided the chandelier, also very nice. So, now I can safely go in and... Uh, excuse me? What? Did I forget to tie my shoelaces or something? Oh fuck, getting the rod to proc is such a crock. It's just not working. I'm almost through half of a life bar and still nothing. Well then, it just has to come down to pure flower power alone. Which I cannot do because I'm completely out of FP. You know what, I'm starting to understand what Melania meant by you will witness true horror. Well, let's hope that later on there won't be a rot immune boss with a giant axe or something. I mean, that, that would really suck. Okay, so now I did manage to inflict her with rot in the second phase. But instead of waiting for it to wear off, I actually kept attacking. Because when she starts summoning, when her life bar gets about halfway, it's even less safe to attack her. So then I should let the rod do most of the work. And that eventually did the trick. Wow, and this is still early game. So after Ronala was finally pushing up the daisies, I went and collected medallions for the lift. And while I was there I picked up Radigant Seal, because even though it lowers her defenses, that is still largely negated by the boost in HP. And after the elevator I collected Lloyd's Sword Talisman for a flat 10% damage boost. Not that significant and requires you to be at full health. But at least it would be a good combination with Lloyd's Shield Talisman later on. But that one is located in the capital, meaning we first have to get past the Draconic Tree Sentinel. But do we really need to defeat him? Or did we? Because I accidentally stumbled on this little side area, and it seems like you either can, or could have at some point, make your way up there. Not sure. Anyway, the reason I went around in the first place is because you can sneak up on this boss for a free hit. However, you do have to make sure that you don't hit him directly, because if you land next to him, the first hit is when the flower opens up, rather than the actual dive downwards, giving you extra time to get away from him. However, that won't be enough to kill him, so uh, when the hell would it be safe, or rather safe enough, to get another attack in? Yeah, that is kind of a problem. Oh, and perhaps missing that little extra damage from the initial dive downwards can in fact nip you in the butt later, uh, uh, bite you in the ass later on. Crapalicious. However, one benefit of getting a free hit in is that it allows you to save your shield tier to negate the first hit on your second attack. So that at least helps you somewhat negate turning attack opportunities into an RNG slot machine. But that's only because this enemy is weak to rot. But what about a boss that is completely immune to it, like a spirit? Well, at least now I could go and collect Lloyd's shield ring, which provides a significant defense boost at full health. So that's very handy when you no longer have the protection of your shield tier. It's basically the next best thing. However, would that be enough to survive against the Shade version of Godfrey? After all, I wouldn't be able to rely on Rot this time, since he is immune to all status effects. So, how did that go? Well, um... Well, it went, uh... Well... It went, uh... Well... It, it went pretty well. Huh. No, it was an absolute RNG nightmare. Because nothing I tried seemed to work consistently. Yes, Godfrey can swing over your head while you're in flower form. But whether he misses or just instantly obliterates you is something that you have no control over. In fact, at any time he can do the upward swing followed by a stomp, which means instant unavoidable death. And although some moments are safer than others, like when he does the relatively rare jump attack, or the slow overhead attack where he has to pull the axe out of the ground. But those are only safer by comparison, meaning you merely have a higher chance of surviving. Which is what this entire fight basically came down to. It wasn't about finding safe opportunities to attack, it was about finding a strategy that would allow the highest chance of success. 
So instead of just charging in with full confidence, instead I thought I would act a little more shy. After all, I am a bit of a wallflower. So I tried to make use of the edges and pillars in the room. But, uh, well, not even the from software of this game can protect me. At least not consistently. And believe me, I tried every possible approach. In fact, I became so desperate at this point that I was considering getting those shield perfumes or some sort of defensive spell. In fact, you might be thinking, shouldn't you have done that? Mm, yeah. However, I did find out that the comparatively safest position was in the back of the arena. Because this structure has a higher chance of blocking Godfrey's axe. So he can still hit you, but he is just slightly less likely to. And you can somewhat consistently hit him through the pillar with your poopa pedals. So what you need to do is to launch yourself into the corner and, and not over the fucking edge. Excuse me? Excuse the fuck out of me that cancels the stake of America? Ugh. Yeah, people tend to believe that the United States of America are the greatest checkpoint in the world, but that's probably because they know little to nothing about other checkpoints to begin with. Well, anyway, as long as you don't launch yourself over the edge, and by actually giving up Lloyd's sword ring for the Crimson Talisman, because combined with wearing Melania's complete armor set, I had just enough defenses where I would sometimes survive with a little sliver of HP, meaning I would otherwise have died from such an attack. So I at least had a sort of strategy-like approach to this fight, but now I had to actually manage to survive long enough. Well, I suppose I deserve a bouquet of orchids after showing my endurance to endure such an endurance round. But the only thing I did get was a bit more of a straightforward fight. Because Morgoth is definitely not immune to Rot. And on top of that, he has the same mechanic as Godric. Meaning he won't switch faces from taking passive damage. It requires a direct hit to initiate it. Now, I would have wanted to use my favorite moment to attack like I would do in a melee fight. The jump attack after a spear throw. But that's not the RNG I got, but with the right spacing, his frantic spinning attack can be punished as well. And speaking of spinning attacks, if you land behind him, his still swipe will actually go over you. So not only had I successfully inflicted him with rot, I still had my shield. Meaning I had a nice opportunity to get more damage in to get his health as low as possible before triggering his second phase. Unfortunately, despite the jump attack I mentioned being a relatively safe opportunity in principle, I couldn't get away from his sort of Damoclus attack in time. So yeah, good thing I still had my shield to save me. And then it was a matter of avoiding his attacks until the rot wore off. Way past when he would usually go into a second phase. However, there was one thing I hadn't taken into account. Namely the damage I would take from his explosive diarrhea. Now I could move just in time, but actually timing your roll to avoid it successfully is quite difficult. However, on my next attempt, I did manage to avoid it, and on top of that, despite his increased rot resistance, it was still enough buildup to activate it again. So it would just be a matter of waiting for him to die, right? Well, that's what I should have done. But when he got to really low health, he did a jump attack, so I thought I could end the fight in a more majestic way. But, uh, well... Yeah, you know, maybe it's not Arcane, but Faith that serves as the luck stat in this game. Oh, and I almost messed up by trying to heal near the end. Oh, speaking of luck by the way, remember the recording issues I mentioned? Look at this footage here. Now that looks like a jump cut, right? But it's not. That's actually the raw footage where my Elgato skipped randomly a few seconds for no reason. So I got really lucky that that didn't happen during the really significant parts of the video. I don't know, maybe the actual device got inflicted with rot, who the fuck knows. Although, speaking of those inflicted with rot, even though he is an optional boss, I thought it would fit the theme of the run to include General Radon. 
After all, lore-wise, he got inflicted with rot when Melania Scarlet Flower bloomed for the first time. Of course, a problem that I always run into when facing Radan is the fact that I just really, really suck at this fight. Well, at least because I landed directly between his feet, well, which he doesn't really have, but you know what I mean. Four swings from his five hit combo went over my head, and the shield tier took the blunt of the fifth swing. Now, I wasn't sure whether the rot would be enough to trigger a second phase, so I wanted to get another attack in just for the physical damage. However, I should have stayed close to him so I could have attacked right after he pulled his swords out of the ground. Because my position would then probably have triggered the follow up. But instead I attacked in between those two moves. Regardless, how the hell did I not get one shot? Not even close actually. I mean this is Nukem Plus with only 20 vigor and no shield tier. So I guess thank you shield ring. Unexpected but very welcome. And then I attacked a third time when he was about to go full meteorite. However, it wasn't clear whether the rod was still active, since he doesn't take damage when he's off the field. And when he landed, it turned out that it was in fact still active. Meaning that I wouldn't be able to inflict it again, which would have been very handy, since Rodan usually gives you a free attack opportunity after he lands when he pulls the giant rocks out of the ground. Emphasis on usually, because he did not do that immediately this time. So then things got a little tense. Especially given the fact that by now his rot offenses have increased. In fact, even with a second dose of rot, I would still have to manage to survive. And as I said, I'm pretty bad at this fight. So, which one of us would end up in a flower-covered grave? Wow, it wasn't even a rot, but the physical damage from my battle pedals that saved me just in time. Regardless, this already fallen demigod has now fallen twice to flower power. And speaking of cutting down tall poppies, now it was time to face an even taller one. Yeah, having to sit and wait for your attack to finish was bound to get me treated like a seed rather than a blooming flower by getting dug deep into the earth, unless I would get really lucky I suppose. I mean, I already have a feet obsessed community to deal with, and now I have to deal with giant feet. However, I didn't even expect this to work, but I could actually break his weak point with a single attack. Well, the flower does inflict mostly physical damage and a negligible amount of holy damage for whatever reason. Now, the benefit of the rod is that it's percentage based, so that helps dealing with such a giant life bar. Regardless, a single proc wouldn't even be enough to take away a third of his HP. And although my shield would protect me during my second attack, but everything after that was just playing a slot machine again. Well, at least the giant is very slow, so if you attack right after one of his bigger attacks, like when he does an overhead slam with his shield, at least that buys you a little extra time. But uh, let's face it, the basic strategy is once more to just get lucky. Really, really lucky. Unfortunately, the rod does not carry over between phases, but the increase in his defenses do, as far as I could tell. Because I needed two attacks to get the rod going again. So, now I would just have to wait until... Uh, <laughs> until I would be able to get to his second phase again. Crap, delicious. However, after defying the odds once more, I decided it would be a smarter decision to use Torrent to avoid him. And hopefully the rod would be enough to finish him off. Without me needing to get another attack in. And in fact, that was the case. Hey, this spell may lead to a lot of floral misfortune, but the hyper version of Rot can definitely be pretty boss to the wall, hardcore awesome sauce times infinity kind of effective at times. That at least is for sure. But would it be enough to deal with the diabolically deranged design of the disaster duo? After all, my previous moon and rain builds turned out to be quite effective. So who knows, maybe the Scarlet Ionia will do uh, uh Okay, well this time they would be a massive thorn in my side again. 
and frustration would quickly start to take root. However, with a little luck, I can at least inflict rot once and have my shield take the hit. But the damage per tick is based on the individual life bar and not the shared one. The only benefit is that you can rot them at the same time, although the problem there is that this means that both of them will be in their second phase at the same time. And that's exactly what you don't want. Because the skinny one becomes faster and gains attacks that reach across half the arena, while the fat one is rolling through, well, basically the entire fucking arena. Now, if you get lucky enough that the rot wears off when the fat one starts rolling, and you get him stuck against the pillar, then you have another attack opportunity. Which, unfortunately, rarely happens. But then, when the apostle remains, when the fuck are you supposed to get any sort of an attack opportunity? In fact, the only reason I survived is because he just happened to summon the fat one back onto the field. And not only will the pillars not survive throughout the fight, but hitting them through it, especially getting enough ticks to build up the rot, is very RNG dependent. As well as surviving is, of course. And I did manage to defy the odds, but eventually your luck will run out and you will fly too close to the sun, or too close to the son of a bitch in this case. So after a while I was like, fuck it, I'll just go and get some sleep pods. I mean, if you hit the ground instead of locking onto them, you can sleep them without inflicting physical damage from the pot itself. Moreover, they require Trina lilies to make, so it's still somewhat befitting of the theme of the run at least. But uh, of course, not only are these things consumable, but Trina lilies don't grow back. So collecting more of them becomes more and more a pain in the butt. Moreover, although they do help, even with all this sleeping going on, it's still no bad of roses. Because if you hit a sleeping godskin with the actual flower dive itself, then they have enough time to wake up and kill you before you have the chance to move again. And if the other one is still around, even if you make sure there's a lot of distance between him and you, given how slow the move is, they still have time to catch up with you. So at best they could be used to allow me to face one godskin at a time, but to make things worse, these pots use a little bit of FP, which can cause you to waste a flask unnecessarily. And of course there was a danger of accidentally inflicting damage with the pot itself. But even when that happened, which would have required me to let myself die, I didn't even get the opportunity to let myself die because I was going to die anyway. Oh, and if this fight wasn't messed up enough as it is, and if you would excuse my flowery language, but what in the fucking fucked up fuckery of Fuckenstein is this supposed to be? He rolled, stopped and immediately threw a fireball, and then continued rolling without the appropriate startup animation. Oh, and in case you were thinking about using the sleep torch instead, well that wouldn't have been an option anyway, because when I tried to go to the snowfield later on, it turned out that From Software has apparently finally managed to actually patch the snowfield skip. And at the time of doing this playthrough at least, no new variation had been discovered. And going through Commander Nile, you know with his two summons attacking you all at once, uh, yeah, going from a duo to a trio is not much of an improvement. So basically I just stopped giving a flying flower and summoned Banal so that me and him could form a duo of our own. In hindsight it would have been more theme appropriate to go for the Mimic the instead I suppose. But again, fuck it, at this point even my persistence was withering away. Well at least we go from a mess to a masterpiece of a fight, at the very least one of my favorites in the game. So I went in filled with confidence, charged in full force, battled to the metal, however Malekif is a hyper aggressive and extremely agile boss. So when the hell would I be able to get a hit in? Well my first idea was to do it when he initiates a sweep attack. Because going around like you would do for a melee attack opportunity would obviously be too slow. But even if you would avoid the sweep itself, you would then be right in front of him and vulnerable to his next attack. So I was kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. So my next idea was to lift myself over his beast claw attack. Which does work with the correct timing at least. But speaking of time, you're stuck for so freaking long that even the shield tier doesn't help. Malekith is just so freaking aggressive. Oh, God damn it, the fucking draconic tree sentinel outside that can hit you through the fork wall. That guy can suck the pollen off my anther. But as I was saying, Malekith is so aggressive that I couldn't find any attack opportunity at all. Other than just trying over and over until he gets lucky enough to survive. 
All right, then. I finally got the rod going. That should be enough for... Yeah, this is not gonna work. A direct approach results in instant death. Fucking Draconic Tree Sentinel! So, I tried the pillars, but they are too thick to hit him through, unless you do it just enough to the side, but not so far that he can actually reach you. But you also do need him to try to attack you, otherwise he won't be inside the hitbox of the Poopa Pedals. Well, at least when you do get the rod to activate and manage to survive, you can just wait on the other side of the pillar, because he obviously cannot hit you there. So, 12 billion years later, after I successfully managed to inflict rot and survive, I realized it wasn't enough to initiate the second phase. However, I got really lucky because I missed my attack, but his health was so close to the threshold that he initiated the next phase by walking into the pooper paddles. And speaking of luck, I actually caught Malekith long enough inside my hitbox because of the from softness of the pillar, and that meant that uh, that meant absolutely nothing. Yeah, so not only does it take ages to get to a second phase, but when you get there, how can you get a safe hit in? Because not only do I have a tiny life bar, but when it's a death infused hit, it gets even tinier like a shrinking dick, and then what life remains drains automatically away as well. And when he does a jump attack, it's a double hitbox because of the AoE. Then again, how many single attacks does he even do in the first place? Well, at least I got good at baiting him near the pillars in the first phase. But for the second phase, that strategy is no longer viable. So what I needed to do is preserve my shield tier for the second phase, and then with a lot of luck of course, go blooming poopa mode early and have Malekith come towards me, so that he will put himself inside of the hitbox. And speaking of luck, he somehow managed to miss me altogether, so I still had my shield available. So now I had to wait for the rod to wear off to get a final hit in and hopefully have my shield protect me. So as long as I could prevent taking a hit... Oh, whoopsie daisy. Okay, now things are becoming really intense once more. Thank you RNG Jesus. But that wasn't even the hardest part. Things are only going to get worse until the end. Or maybe not. Maybe Auto Omniscient won't pose that much of a threat, because he has a low amount of HP. And because I haven't fought Millennia yet, he cannot use the power of the Poopa Flower against me. And because this giddy know-it-all is also the all blabbering, you will get an easy free attack opportunity, which does a shit ton of damage against this little life bar. Of course, then you do have to manage to survive long enough, because he's also the all-spamming. Fortunately, not the all-healing, because he only has a single flask. Which is pretty foolish when you are already the all-FP-having. But a relatively safe place to hide is in the same place where fighting Shade Godfrey was most effective. Although actually hitting him through the pillar is much harder to pull off, because he is a much smaller target. So that got pretty risky. Because he can still move around the pillar after all. Fortunately, we can also move around to the other side of the pillar. Oh fuck, that still was not enough. Well, back to the pillar again. Takes ages because he's not the all moving. Or the all hurry up already -er. Well, you get the point, I think. Alright, we're getting close to the end. 
But after the rot insatiable Sage shenanigans, the real Godfrey should ironically pose less of a threat since he doesn't share the immunity of his spiritual counterpart. Well, that's what you would think. But I have the same health bar as before. However, the real Godfrey inflicts way more damage, causing actual one shots or two shots when I have the shield active. So uh, how the fuck was I supposed to survive at all? Well, sometimes he would arbitrarily miss and or I would be able to survive a weaker hit as not every attack inflicts equal amounts of damage. However, that made an already RNG heavy fight so RNG heavy that it would collapse into an RNG neutron star. Well, at least I had the power of rot on my side this time. However, Godfrey already has two phases even before going John Cena mode. And you would think that this slow transition would be a good opportunity to do another flower attack. However, the rot would tend to be active right until just after that phase change. And from then on, he gains the arena wide AoEs. When in the ever living fuck would you ever get a survivable attack opportunity? I mean, getting to this phase at all is already an RNG nightmare. However, then I did get extremely lucky because all three swings of his free hit combo missed me. So now the rot would be enough to get him into a second form. Although it doesn't carry over, meaning that now I would have to find attack opportunities in his horror loo form. Or better said, now I would witness true horror loo. Well, first of all, I would need a more consistent way to even get to that form. Well, something that wasn't viable against his shade form was viable here. So what I did is to land further away from him rather than aiming directly at him to allow him to move towards me and into my pooper paddles. Not only would he take less physical damage this way, which is paradoxically a good thing since the rot wears off before his second phase, but there's a better chance of surviving if you are at a distance since you are more likely to take only a single hit. Now for the initial hit in his second form, I did have a strategy, but that was very hard to execute. Namely to move just outside of his reach and then try to land behind him, because that could result in his follow-up attack missing me. But at least it turned out that even when you take a hit from the kick, it's still survivable. Okay, maybe the rod will do enough damage. Come on, stay alive. He's almost dead. He's almost dead. He's... Damn it, the rod wore off too early. Fuck. Please give me one attack opportunity. The explosion itself should be enough. Just one opportunity. No, don't stop short. What? No, don't monologue when you're dying. Don't monologue. And you cannot skip it when you're already dead. Fuck. That didn't count. <sighs> you know what? Let's just make our way to Melania first. Because that would be an improvement. Oh, fuck. That means getting past Commander Nile because of the lack of the snowfield skip. Ah, uh, yeah, you know what? If I continue like this, then the Scarlet Ionia will be the flower upon my grave. I think it's simply time to increase my vigor. I mean, you cannot spell victory without vigor. Vigor, vic, vigor to re, vic. God damn it, I'm so tired of this run. I just want to get it over with at this point. Okay, same position again, just one final hit, but at least now I should be able to survive- What the fuck? Well, I wouldn't let that happen twi- Bro, what the fuck? Yeah, I guess when Chad says that we're going to smash, we're going to smash. <laughs> Stop this, I do not consent to this. Just at least buy me flowers first. Oh, wait, 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 wait. no, anything but flowers. Okay, finally, uh, what the fuck? C come on, even at that point he can cancel it? And what's worse is that I did do damage all three times, but it just fell barely short. Oh, fuck me, I need a drink. Well, although I had zero hopes for defeating Melania, I was very curious what flower versus flower would be like. So I once more went back to Commander Nile. And as should be clear by now, it still required some luck to not get gangbanged to death at the start of the fight. But after that, you can pretty much tank your way through the next attacks. Well, sort of. 
So I suppose that I do have to say that I'm somewhat glad that I did most of the run with low vigor. Otherwise, I probably would have too little interesting footage to work with. Since having low vigor did require a lot of problem solving. I mean, I wouldn't have any stress-related illnesses and broken furniture, but uh, you guys know by now what I'm willing to endure for your entertainment. In fact, that's why I'm going here at all, because you're probably wondering what it would be like to fight Melania like this. Well, in order to get there, you will have to get past the archers with their powerful range attacks and uh, the, well, the apparently total absence of any short range attacks. So that's, uh, that's something. Well, I guess that works for me. Well, to reiterate once more, now with my high vigor, it basically all comes down to tanking. Although, interestingly, Loretta's weapon art attack, so to speak, can actually pass over your head. But of course, tanking strategies are never that effective against Melania because of her healing abilities. Well, at least there is a neat little shortcut that you can take to get to her quickly, which, uh, what the fuck? Eh, uh, dude? Seriously? So that also has been patched. So after being a little less quick and drinking some Nesquik, it was time to go into the Melania fight with, uh, uh, with uh, suitably uh, low expectations, I must admit. And those expectations were met. Well, actually that's not completely true, because the very next attempt, to quote the second greatest surrogate father figure in all fiction, I got lucky. Real lucky. Because I actually made it well into the second phase. And as the many, 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 many failed attempts later on would show, merely getting to the second phase at all is a rarity. But there is one major benefit in the first phase, well, there's already a quite unexpected benefit, namely that the very source of the Scarlet Rot, the goddess of rot herself, can be inflicted with Scarlet Rot. I mean, you would think that she of all bosses would be immune, but then again, she literally lost limbs because of her own body is basically destroying herself. So I guess when you give her a taste of her own medicine, you essentially cause her to overdose or something. But whatever may be the case, the other benefit is that when you get the rod going, you can actually quite easily avoid her. Because she tends to just walk towards you menacingly. But the major problem here is to inflict her with Scarlet Rod to begin with. After all, her resistance is incredibly high. And when she attacks, she is aggressive as fuck, does a ton of damage, and of course she heals from every hit. So I basically just decided to leave her for last. However, getting past the Elden Beast would be practically impossible. I mean, Radagon at least can be afflicted with Scarlet Rot, and a lot of his swings tend to miss you, but the Elden Beast is completely immune. And on top of that, apart from the RNG needed to not immediately die after attacking, you also need him to not move around too much, <laughs> good luck with that, otherwise you will literally not have the FP required to make it through this giant life bar at all. If you can even make it that far, because at any point he can basically insta-kill you. So with Melania still on the horizon and me already being done as fuck with this stupid run, I decided to do something drastic. And that was to go and get the Mimic tier. Oh, and remember all the recording issues? This is how fucked up my Elgato was. This footage here looks like how I often speed up footage. But this is actually not done through editing. This is the raw, unedited footage of this fight. I, I don't even know how it's physically possible for my Elgato to record something and then have the raw file at double speed, but it happened. I'm, I'm speechless. I am without speech. So, now I would not only have the extra damage output required, because I was bound to run out of FP anyway. In fact, even with the Mimic tier, there would still be a danger of running out. Especially because it is constantly taking damage as well. Especially when the Elden Stars come out. Because I had protection from my flask, but he didn't. However, an even more devastating attack is his Fire Breath. Because when he does that when you are in Flower Mode, there is no way you're going to get out of it. So I barely survived, but the Mimic didn't. So now I was all alone again and very low on both Crimson and Cerulean Flask.
Fuck, I'm completely out of healing and I have one FP bar left. However, I only need to get one more attack in. Oh, I got him. Wait, what? Huh? Okay, hold on everyone for just a second. Okay, let's make sure the window is closed. Ah, okay, that looks nice. Yeah, you know what? I've just decided that I actually hate this game. And also everything else in the entirety of existence. Well, at least this time I got better RNG. And the Mimic tier was just barely able to hold on. Oh, by the way, speaking of things I hate about this fight. Why did they change the projectiles that come from above? Because now you need to do this awkward turnaround zigzag move to consistently avoid them, whereas before you could simply outrun them. I already noticed this back in my full moon run, so I think this change was made in patch 1.04 for absolutely no fucking reason whatsoever. So, thank you from software. You guys already owe me a new window. Regardless, this time I was able to make it through the fight. In fact, even the Mimic survived. And he was definitely the MVP of this match. However, it wasn't over yet since Melania herself was still up ahead and the Mimic would not help me against her. In fact, under these circumstances, I actually think it makes the fight impossible to win because Melania regains her health faster from attacking the Mimic than any possible damage it or you both can inflict on her. And like I said before, the fact that I immediately made it to her second form on the second try was a complete fluke because now I was rarely able to make it that far. In fact, even where you get the best possible RNG, where you not only manage to inflict Rot, but avoid taking any damage in the process, she can immediately push the win button with a waterfall dance, as you won't have enough time to react to it when you just come out of your flower mode. Now, when you get the Rot going, you can trigger that move when you get close to her again. However, even then, it's not like it's on an actual timer. She can still do it out of nowhere at basically any time. And of course, that is extra painful when it happens during the second phase, when you finally make it there again. Speaking of the transition from first to second form, the rod damage cannot push her into her second form. You will need a direct hit for that, just like for whatever reason you cannot trigger the second form with a critical attack. That will just cause her to survive with 1 HP. One benefit though is that the rod does actually carry over. So that's something at least, but keep in mind that each time you trigger a status effect, a boss gets more and more resistant to it. And Melania already has one of the highest rot resistances in the game. And contrary to the first phase, she is extremely aggressive during the second phase. If you can even make it to the second phase, because there is nothing that works consistently. Just like with most other bosses, because what quote unquote works depends on factors that you don't have control over. I mean, can hitting her directly to make her flinch work? Yeah, it can, depending on what she chooses to do next. Can going flower at a distance work to allow her to walk into it? Yeah, it can, depending on what she chooses to do next. But you are not the one controlling what she does next. And at any time, she can do one of her hyper armor attack and just come with you to death before you even have a chance to stand up again. Also, her grab attack has hyper armor and even provides her with iframes. So yeah, I was getting pretty desperate. I even tried including defensive spells like Black Flame Protection, which decreases the damage you take, which is obviously very beneficial, but it also messes with your FP consumption and it makes your flash less effective, which is a side effect of that spell. And on top of that, it's still RNG dependent whether you will survive or not. In fact, I even acquired the Blessed Dew Talisman to regenerate health when you are avoiding her, but that's only 2 HP per second. Heck, I even went and got a Great Rune activated, of all things. Well, at least the fight against the four twins minus two wasn't that big of a deal. Although I did get spiked by Dunkstein. However, Rot is pretty effective against them. But of course, even when you have a Great Rune, you will need to spend your consumable rune arcs to begin with. And at any time, they can go to waste when Melania simply presses the win button. I also tried Blessing of the Earth Tree and the Earth Tree Heal. Again, very helpful, but it doesn't count on the fact that this fight is still an RNG fuckfest. It helps a bit, but it obviously is not going to win the fight for you. 
In fact, I even went so far as to respec to get more mind, which ironically translates to more healing then. Regeneration spell plus regeneration from the blessed new talisman while waiting for the rot to wear off. Great rune for maximum health. Saving my shield tier for the second phase. But no matter what you include, no matter what approach you take, at best it can only give you a slight advantage. But that's it. Whenever Melania decides that you die, you die. At any time she can waterfall, even as an input response where she does it at the exact moment you initiate flower mode. And at any moment she can do the grab that has hyper armor and even iframes. And just like the waterfall dance, in the second phase she can do the spirit summons even as an input response. Meaning that your death is guaranteed no matter how much favorable RNG you might have had before that. So eventually I realized that if you stare into the crotch fungus long enough, the crotch fungus stares back at you. And I decided that I had enough. After dying, 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 and dying over and over again. Well, as revenge, I broke a chair, so I think we can call it a draw. Especially given that I acquired a nice comfy chair of my own. If you enjoyed this playthrough, then, uh, well, then you were not the one playing it. So, uh, like and subscribe, and uh, don't wither away, I guess. Or do, whatever, I don't give a fuck anymore.